Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Errol and today I'm going to discuss the top five reasons why you may be having issues with a connection from switch to switch, transceiver to transceiver, and so on like that. So let's get into it. As most people know, most of the problems with connections in your network are found at the physical layer, layer one. So uh, the first thing you want to do is check your physical connection. What we usually say to do is to pull the cable out, reseed it back in. If you have a transceiver or a GBIC or a SFP, whatever you want to call it, uh, pull that out, push it back in, take the cable, pull it out, push it back in. Do that on both ends. Make sure you got a firm, solid connection. Uh, the next thing you do is, back in the days when you're in science class, do these science projects, you always want to create a constant to try to find out what your variable is and your changes. So what I recommend doing if you're not getting connection, um, try known working things such as a cable. If you're not getting a connection, try a different cable. See if you get a connection. If you do get a connection, then the cable's probably bad. If you don't get a connection, try the next thing. Try to go to a known working port on the switch where, you know, let's try this port. If that works, then you know you got a bad port. If it still doesn't, then maybe it's something else. If you're working with fiber and you have a transceiver or a GBIC, then what you want to do is try a known working one if you have one. And if all that still doesn't work, then also try like a whole different switch because maybe the switch itself could be bad. Okay, so now we're coming to number three, distance. Make sure the distance that you're using matches the technology that you're using. Usually uh, with copper, um, twisted pair, goes to about 100 meters. If you're going over that, you're probably going to start losing connection. It's probably not going to work. Uh, a couple common uh, fiber ones are multi-mode, which is 220 meters or 550, depending on the micron that you're using. And in single mode, usually is about 10 kilometers. Uh, make sure you're not going over those. Uh, the next thing I would say is make sure you have the correct product. Uh, is it the same interface on both ends? Do you have a multi-mode SFP or transceiver on one end and then LX on the other end. Simple things, but sometimes it's the thing to check and that's what's going on. Uh, is it supported? Uh, do you have the right SFP in there? Do you have an HP SFP and a Cisco, does, and a Cisco switch that really doesn't work too well? Um, and sometimes you may even need to upgrade. Maybe it's supported, but you're at the wrong version of firmware, so you may have to upgrade the firmware, and maybe it doesn't accept the SFP just because the HP SFP maybe it doesn't work in legacy equipment and you may have to upgrade to a more advanced product. And so now, finally, number five, which is actually the most broadest subject, is the configuration. What you want to do is make sure your configuration is correct. Um, are the ports turned off? Because you can disable ports and you may not know that they're disabled. Maybe they were disabled in a previous configuration. Auto negotiation, this is a big one sometimes. Sometimes you're going from a different manufacturer, maybe from a Cisco to an HP or even from an Avaya to Avaya, but with different switches, what can happen is our negotiation could be turned on on one side and off on the other side, so they're not talking correctly. So what you want to do is try like four different things. Try turning it on on both sides, then try turning it off on both sides, then maybe turn it on on one side, off on the other, and then switch it off on one and one the other. Sometimes, usually, it's weird, but that part works. Uh, span entry. Span entry is another one. Span entry can get a little difficult, complex sometimes, but make sure there's not a loop in the system. Usually if there's a loop, you'll see a bunch of lights just flickering off, blinking like a Christmas tree. But maybe span entry shut down one of the ports, and maybe that's why you're not getting a connection. And actually for this third bullet, uh, are there shared ports? This I'm going to actually show you an actual switch so you can see what I'm talking about. So for the last thing, what I wanted to discuss was shared ports. Sometimes they call them shared ports, sometimes they call them borrowed ports, but what it is is if you look at this switch, you have ports 1 through 24, and there's these two SFP ports. You see this little ring around it. Basically means you can only use one or the other. So maybe if you have something plugged into here, this won't be working. Or vice versa, if you have something plugged into here, this won't work, so the connection won't work. You can only use one or the other. So that's what one thing that you want to check to make sure that that's working properly and that you don't have something plugged into both ports so that way you can get a connection. So, thanks for joining us today. Hopefully this helps you out with your connection issues. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time.